John Wick, Chapter 4, The Review. Let's get into it. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Patelson Show. Yeah, John Wick, Chapter 4. I've seen all the John Wicks, and I saw this one recently a couple of days ago. John Wick 4, directed by Chad Stileski, written by Shea Hatton and Michael Finch, starring Keanu Reeves, Ian McShane, Lawrence Fishburne, Clancy Brown, Donnie Yen, Shamir Anderson, and Bill Skarsgård, just to name a few. There's a lot of other actors in this movie, but most of them got shot in the face. Because that's what happens in these movies. Everybody gets shot in the face. And I'm sure some actors got on their IMDb page that they're in John Wick Chapter 4. Guy who gets shot in the face. I don't blame them for that. Okay. Here's a quick wrap-up of the four John Wick movies. John Wick is a former assassin of The Table, which is a covert, secret shadow organization in charge of murder for hire and other nefarious operations throughout the globe. Okay, John Wick, after a completely successful career of murdering people for money, decides to hang up his guns and retire. And the table allows this because he was really good at murdering people for money. They let him go. Then, I guess, the only person in the entire universe who doesn't know who John Wick was killed his dog and stole his car, which makes him come back and start murdering people responsible, which turns the table and all the other assassins against him, and he has to fight for his life and kill lots of folks. The kill count. The kill count for the John Wick movies is 439 total that John Wick kills. That's a little over 109 per movie, and not one of these people is an innocent. John Wick only kills assassins. That means wandering around the globe, there were 439 people whose job it was to kill people. 439 people assassins. And there's lots more in the movies, in the scenes. And there's my favorite scene uh, in the first movie is when the contract comes out on John Wick. There are average people in a street scene who get their phone and they're getting the text message and they look and see him. Like there's so many murderers in the town. How many murderers are there in these movies that it's just a, just a common job to have assassins by the droves in the streets? Okay, so like every third person is a hired killer. How many people need to get murdered in this society? Jeez, how many people just need to be killed in this John Wick universe? Also, not a ton of police in these movies. If any, there's really no police presence. There's all of these action sequences where things blow up. It's like the Fast and the Furious. They destroy a town, drive their cars everywhere, shoot everyone, blow up stuff. There's not a single police helicopter nine times out of ten. Same thing with these movies. Um, yeah, he rides the horse down a street in one of the movies and no one does anything. Anyways, I'm reading too much into the, the plot and the, uh, the unbelievability of this movie, which is essentially uh, gun ballet. So let's get into the review. The review, okay. Number one, yes, I liked it. Number two, yes, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, okay. The action. The action sequences are exciting to be sure, but there came a time in the middle of John Wick chapter four when I started to see recycled action phrases parts of the choreography that I think I've seen before, especially in the Osaka Museum hotel fight. I have thought I've seen some things. Now, the choreographer, the fight choreographer, his name is Jerry Marinas. I can't blame for that. He's, had to, he's got to creatively shoot 109 people per movie, so I don't blame him for that, but I started to see a couple of recycled phrases uh, in the fight choreography, it's things I've seen before. Uh, but once this movie starts, as far as action goes, it doesn't stop. It takes off from beginning to end. Lots of action, lots of fun. John Wick gets shot quite a few times in this movie, but mostly he deflects most of them because he has a suit jacket made out of Kevlar. So you get this weird Dracula thing he does where he's blocking bullets and shooting from behind his coat. Yeah, he's got a Kevlar coat on that looks the same as every other suit jacket, whereas my suit jacket can't deflect ranch dressing. The story. Is there a believable story in this franchise? No. 
it's a graphic novel. It's not based on a graphic novel, but it reads, and I'm sorry, you see it like it is a graphic novel. It's set in modern times, except it isn't. The clothing and the cars and the weaponry are all set to now, but it's not now, clearly not now, because there's no pedestrians in this movie. There were people in the movie, but there's no one else in the movie. Tell you what I mean. There's a car sequence around the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, and there are cars whizzing by, and people get hit by cars, and they're shooting, and not a single car stops. No one stops. It doesn't stop traffic. People are being murdered in the streets, but the cars just keep going by like nothing's going on. I live in L.A. Everything stops traffic. I mean, my goodness. There's a scene in a disco where fights break out, and people still dance. There are people still dancing, because there's no one in the movie except the people in the movie. Directing and cinematography. It is a beautifully shot movie. It really is beautiful to watch. Uh, there's lots of, uh, it's, yeah, it is beautifully shot. It's paired wonderfully with a musical score, which keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time. It's a beautifully shot and directed movie. Speaking of beautifully shot, uh, there's a fight sequence, which is uh, one of the many, which is shot in a series of rooms. And it's shot from above those rooms, looking down at a 45 degree angle in between. And it's really pretty. It is really, it's a beautifully shot movie. It's like a video game, very well done. The acting. There's not a whole lot for the actors to sink their teeth into. There's not a whole lot of dialogue. And all of the characters are making the same choices. Number one, to be certain of themselves, they all are. Number two, caring only for themselves and what interests them. And number three, to be sort of nihilistic about the whole thing. Yeah, no one really cares at all and everyone thinks they're all about to die. They're all seconds from death and they're all like, Oh, I'm in the game, yo. Do I recommend this movie? Yeah, I do. Suspend your disbelief, leave it all out before you go into the theater, go on the ride, and enjoy the aforementioned gun ballet. One more note on directing. There's a blatant ripoff in the... No, it's a ripoff. It's a blatant ripoff. Okay, it's an homage. There is a wonderful homage in the movie to the 1979 cult classic, The Warriors, directed by Walter Hill. I'll post the link uh, for someone that's done a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, Chad Stileski and I are of similar age, which is why I delighted in this, because I'm sure he loves that movie like I love that movie. Yeah, cult classic, 1979, The Warriors by Walter Hill. Check that out and brilliant homage in John Wick chapter four. A quick note on anti-heroes, because John Wick is an anti-hero for certain. Uh, he's a murderer who never atones for his former deeds. Um, do we care that he gets his life back? He's a murderer for hire. He's, he's killed human beings, uh, a lot of them. He's a murderer for hire. But we love our anti-heroes, don't we? We absolutely love them. We love anti-heroes, and I just wonder why, why we do that. Every person I know prefers Batman over Superman, prefers Iron Man over Captain America, and the Punisher over Spider-Man. It's kind of sad to me that we go for the vigilantes instead of the monk. Uh, we call them goody two-shoes heroes. Um, yeah, every person I know loved the return of Luke Skywalker to the Mandalorian, where he's in his full Jedi powers, he's slashing people with his lightsaber, he's, he's force crushing a droid into pieces, we love that, but they hated his force projection and his non-violent way of the Jedi stance to ending his own life. But that's the arc we're supposed to get. Obi-Wan surrenders himself, Luke doesn't kill Yoda, dies in his bed. I don't know. That's food for thought, but I really do think, uh, well, you know where I stand. Time for a shout out. This comes from my Dungeons and Dragons movie review. Zach Milne Talks Movies says, as a non-gamer, I had a blast with this film. It was a legit fantasy epic that I want to see more of. Zach, me too. I posted on that, I responded to you already. Yes, me too. Uh, if you haven't seen the Dungeons & Dragons movie, please go see it. 
please see it. It was a ball. It was really a lot of fun, and I really appreciate that comment. Thanks, Zach. That'll do it for this week. Thanks for tuning in to The Tom Battelton Show. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification button. My stuff drops on Sunday. And let's talk about the things we love. Let's talk about science fiction, pop culture, philosophy, board games, comic books, all that nerdy good stuff. It's good to have you with me, honestly. Until I see you again, peace, love, live long, and prosper. And I mean it.